Hello and welcome to our um, brief webinar on preparing for the Apple Training Institute. I'm Susie Bruce and I'm Director of the Gordy Center for Substance Abuse Prevention and the Apple Training Institute. And I'm Holly Deering and I'm the Program Manager of the Apple Training Institute. We're excited that so many of you are joining us today and um, this will be, well we are recording this and the slides and the recording um, will be available so if you've got um, other team members uh, that weren't able to participate and you think it's helpful um, for them to hear the whole recording or just to look at the slides, uh, we will have that available uh, later on. So we're going to go ahead and get started. What we're going to really provide is an overview of um, the Apple Training Institute, what to expect, how best to prepare, um, and then we'll have some time to answer questions. You can use the chat feature at any time, so if you're having any challenges uh, with connections or hearing anything, um, you can type it in there, but also any questions you have as we go along, and um, we'll make sure that we get a chance to address those. So a brief history of Apple. Uh, you see Drs. Joe Geek and Susan Grossman who really founded uh, the model and the first um, of the Apple conferences. This was founded uh, really back in 1991 here at UVA and uh, they really were looking at the fact that there was not a comprehensive substance abuse prevention model that looked at the unique culture within athletics. So they put their heads together, Joe Geek from the sports medicine side and Susan Grossman from the prevention side, um, created this seven part model and then presented it to the NTAA saying we think that there's value beyond just what we're using at UVA and that other institutions could benefit from this. And um, the very next year we had our first uh, Apple conference in January 92 and we've been doing it every year since then. We've had two uh, Division II only um, Apple trainings, uh, 2015 and just this past September. Uh, we trained, changed our name to Apple Training Institute uh, last year, really looking at the fact that we are not just a conference. It's not just come and pick and choose things to see. It's much more of a comprehensive model. Uh, we have sort of faculty, there's some um, specific things that there are expectations uh, of the weekend and the following year. So as you probably know, we are funded significantly from a grant from the NCAA. They provide um, and cover about 90% of the entire cost. So the small cost to each school uh, kind of just is only paying about 10% of the, the total cost for each campus. And of course we have two um, training institutes institutes each January and that is open to all NCAA member schools. So we want to recognize our educational partners, obviously the NCAA which has been working with us for almost 27 years um, and our home here at the University of Virginia. Uh, also we get significant support from Team Coalition which works to prevent um, drinking and driving during athletic events. Uh, My Playbook, which is part of the UNC Greensboro Institute to promote athlete health and wellness, and the Center for Drug-Free Sport. So our overall goals of the Apple experience um, are to provide high quality education around substance abuse prevention specific to athletics, to empower the teams and in particular our student athletes so that they have a voice and they feel that they are making a difference. And then over the course of not just the weekends in January, but over the course of the next year, our role is to support teams. So how can you do your best um, to prevent alcohol, tobacco, or other drug use? And so we shorten that to ATOD. You'll hear us um, doing, using that through the webinar and also uh, throughout the Training Institute. So here's what you will get by attending Apple. Uh, you will be completing a survey that will help you get a, a really good assessment of what's going well in your athletic department as well as areas to work on. You're going to get a lot of ideas. Um, we try to have as much networking as possible. There will be opportunities for campus just to share ideas, informal presentations and informal networking. Uh, we'll hear about best practices. Um, we have some really amazing speakers and experts uh, that can also potentially come to your campus. Uh, and by the end of the weekend, you will have a plan that you created with feedback 
uh, from us that we believe will be uh, something that you can actually accomplish within the next year. We have specific learning outcomes. Uh, so we know from a lot of evaluation over the past uh, couple of decades that when you leave Apple, um, you will have better relationships uh, within your team, your administrators and student athletes. Clearly, you'll understand the Apple model. Uh, you'll feel much more empowered to impact problems on your campus. We do a lot around bystander intervention, so your student athletes will have better skills in how to help their teammates. And that flows right into the leadership skills. You'll have a lot of great information about impacting ATOD issues, specifically around student athletes, what really works, what to avoid. And again, you'll have that action plan. So here are the seven slices of the Apple model. We look at everything from their first interactions with a potential student athlete to recruitment. What are those expectations and attitudes that are being sent out formally or informally um, to your community, to parents, to potential student athletes? What actually happens on your campus? What are your policies, what kind of educational programs, drug testing? And then the follow-up of when someone breaks those policies, um, maybe gets a positive drug screen, what kind of sanctioning do you have in place? And how are we referring student athletes who might have a more serious problem and getting effective counseling? So those are the seven areas. Um, and you'll be, each campus will be completing a survey that looks at how you're doing in each of those seven areas. So I'm going to turn it over to Holly, who's going to be talking about how to prepare for Apple. So the first thing you're really going to want to do if you haven't done already is to build your team. And as we've said before, you can bring a team of at least four, but no more than six members. And our only requirement is that at least two of them have to be student athletes, and one needs to be some sort of administrator. Um, a lot of times we're asked, what is the best makeup of a team? You know, who should I bring? And, and really it boils down to what is best for your school and what will help you succeed. Some schools bring one administrator and five student athletes. Some, you know, bring a different breakdown in variety. Um, it really is about what is best to help you succeed. Is there a coach that is an ally, an athletics trainer? Is it perhaps someone in health promotion, a health educator that would be really helpful for you to move your, your program forward? We've had from smaller schools people who work in residence life. It, it really boils down to who are your allies, who are your support team, um, so that you can take some, uh, your action plan back to your school and really implement it. All individual members need to register by November 15th. And this has been, you as team contacts have that link. As a team contact, you also need to register yourself. And it's a chance to then you send that out to them and they will register. Lauren will begin confirming your team rosters in November just to let you know who has registered because oftentimes, as we know, we send out emails and they get lost. So that will give you a chance to confirm your team roster and make sure we have everyone signed up who needs to be signed up. If you're interested, we just created this last year, actually it came out this summer, a really great recruiting video. It's about two minutes long on kind of what is Apple. Um, we have representatives from Apple to faculty, administrators, student athletes that are sharing why they believe Apple is a worthwhile experience. So if you're looking for just a quick kind of commercial to send out to people at your school to generate interest and buzz, we highly recommend using that. And that is located on our website, appleathletics.org. Other questions we often get about building the teams, other requirements for student athletes, and we don't have any set requirements. We really leave it up to the individuals to decide. However, it's important to perhaps not bring a whole team of graduating seniors. Uh, just because that that will lose your momentum as you're planning your action plan that sometimes will take a whole year and you want that younger leadership to take place. However, certainly if you have a rock star senior who um, you know is really making a difference and can do a lot in a semester, it's still a great opportunity to bring them. It's just important to think of the makeup of your team. Think about the student athlete sports teams they're representing. Are you having a good mix of males versus females and so that all the voices are being heard? 
Now we know that occasionally team members drop out. So sometimes students suddenly have practice or something they didn't know about or you know, another administrator gets a job at a new school. So this does happen. Please know, um, please let us know immediately of any changes. You can do replacements. In fact, we prefer for you to replace an individual with another individual. So like you see in our example, for instance, if a male student athlete drops out, if you could replace them with another male student athlete, that would be preferable. As the time gets closer and we start to hit January, if replacements are not made, we do have additional fees to help cover our costs since we have already made a lot of our expenses by December. The next thing you should have already done and are perhaps already working on is our athletics department baseline assessment. This is a long survey, especially if you're new, you're not quite prepared, um, that's, which is why we attached a PDF version to your email that was sent out so you can print it out, review it, share it with other people in your athletics department to get the best answers. My best advice for, uh, for folks who are new is don't stress. You know, fill it out as best as you can. This is kept completely confidential. Only Apple staff and your team will see it. We do not share this information with anyone, including the NCAA. But it is so critical that you do do this because all of our discussions, for the most part, on Saturday morning in particular, are based on the results of this assessment that really breaks down our seven slices of the apple and gets into that in-depth in core part of our programming and our curriculum. So it's really important that you do get it done and do it thoughtfully, but also at the same time, if you don't have the best score, that's okay. That's why you're coming. Now, many of you perhaps have done some amazing things already at your school, and what a lot of uh, Apple is about is about sharing that success. You know, we are not existing in a vacuum and in a bubble, and we are all help here to help each other in substance abuse prevention. And so we want folks to share their great programs or campaigns that they've done. In particular, if you are a previous Apple institution, we would love for those schools to highlight work that they've done in their action plan. So a student athlete mentor program, an educational program, that sort of thing would be excellent to share. Our applications for this are due on November 1st, and team contacts have the link. By now, you're either going to Charlottesville or you're going to San Diego, both of which are going to be fantastic. Just a couple little notes. If you are going to Charlottesville, we have a delightful little airport. Uh, it's about four miles from the hotel. We have free parking at the hotel and there's a free airport shuttle. And you don't have to worry about traffic. We're in Charlottesville. Now, in San Diego, that might be a slightly different story. We are at the Hyatt Regency Mission Bay and Spa and Marina. And the San Diego airport is thankfully only six miles to the hotel, but again, bigger city, there is a bit more traffic. You will need to arrange your own transportation to the hotel. And the parking is about $25 a night. It's going to be based on their 2018 rate, and of course, we do not know that yet. We at Apple make all the hotel arrangements for you and it is covered in our grant is a shared double occupancy hotel rooms and so what this means is that you will be placed with another individual. Um, you can indicate your roommate preference in the registration process and we do a really good job of pairing people who do not have uh, roommates coming uh, with other members of that same gender and role. So for instance, a female student athlete would be placed with another female student athlete. However, that's not your thing, totally fine. We have single rooms available for an additional cost of either $109 in Virginia or $168 in California. The link for payment is provided upon confirmation email uh, when you do your individual registration. We do have great wireless internet in the meeting spaces and guest rooms and of course there are workout facilities because these are athletes. It is important to know that each person will need to provide a debit or a credit card to cover incidentals. These cards are not pre-charged. It is just simply there if someone decides to get room service or a movie or anything like that, that is needed. And so for our students who perhaps don't have credit cards, it's important to know that you perhaps will need to take care of that, but there's no charges. Our grant takes care of everything on the master bill other than some random incidentals from time to time. And as I've said before, we are your one-stop shop. We make all of your hotel arrangements. So if you have any changes that you need or any questions, we take care of all of that for you. You will not get a confirmation from the hotel directly. Again, that is all run through us. 
we understand that student athletes like to eat and they eat a lot. So we will provide plenty, hopefully, of food for them. Um, all of our meals, starting with Friday dinner through Sunday breakfast, are going to be served buffet style. We find that this works best to accommodate all the many dietary requests we do provide snacks on Saturday afternoon. And of course, if there's any dietary needs, please let us know on our registration form so that way we can make the proper accommodations. Again, we're also asked what to bring to Apple. Our dress is pretty casual. Again, it's half student athletes are at uh, the weekend. So it's just important to be comfortable in khakis and jeans. It's often cold, so sweatshirts are often uh, appropriate to have. We uh, do have an indoor pool in Charlottesville, and we are about a mile, I believe, from the beach in San Diego. So feel free to pack a swimsuit or have your students pack a swimsuit. Uh, in terms of materials, we're going to have notebooks and pens for all attendees, but it is always helpful for at least one individual to have a laptop or an iPad to use for the action plan that must be submitted online prior to departure. So. What happens when you're at Apple? So there you see our smiling faces. Um, so we have a check-in. Uh, there are two levels of check-in. So one is the hotel check-in to actually get your room, um, and then a separate check-in, um, usually very close by, uh, for the actual training institute. So you see our happy um, Apple staff here with all of the cool bags and materials um, to get out to everyone. So we do ask that not just the team contact, but each individual checks in um, at the Apple uh, registration table, because we do have a short pretest for everyone upon arrival. I mean, as we've said, one of the reasons we've been doing this for 27 years is that we collect a lot of data, we do a lot of reporting uh, back to the NCAA, and because of that, we can show the impact that it the, just the weekend experience makes, but also what happens over the course of the next year. And when people turn in their pretests, then they get some of their cool Apple swag and materials. A few more things to expect over the course of the weekend. Um, we will evaluate every session. Um, that is, for the most part, um, an online uh, web-based evaluation form. There will be a brief post-test on Sunday before people leave. We do have a lot of fun things like team photos, so we'll be doing those on Saturday. And then you'll get a copy, um, a hard copy, um, on a printed copy on Sunday. And you can see sort of an example, and that's how our great partnership with Team Coalition. And of course, lots of opportunities to network. So a little bit about uh, the presentations you'll see. Um, our Apple faculty um, will be giving the keynote presentations or the overall uh, understanding of how alcohol can impact athletic performance, what the Apple model is, what are best practices, how you can apply that so you get all of the tools you need to create a specific action plan for your campus. But we also have a variety of breakout sessions um, that cover the topics as you see and particularly around um, nutrition, hazing, um, lots of models from schools that have attended Apple that are sharing what their action plan was, how they were successful, how to avoid pitfalls and problems as well. Uh, we will be offering, um, for those that are attending the Virginia, the Charlottesville Training Institute, we'll be offering sort of a pre-conference um, on Step Up, the Bystander Intervention Program. So it'll be a most of the day facilitator training. So at the end of that day, you would then be um, sort of certified to deliver Step Up training. And you will have enough materials you could go back to your campus and um, facilitate and train others in how to give this program. So Step Up, um, if you're not familiar with it, is a bystander intervention program. It was designed um, at the University of Arizona specifically around student athlete issues and has been endorsed and funded by the NCAA. So um, it looks at not just sexual violence, um, but a wide variety of health um, and issues around for college students um, and how to train student athletes and others around um, how to intervene when they see a problem situation. So that's what Step Up is. We know some of you may be using Step Up on your campus already. So if you're wondering would this be helpful or not, um, we did this last year as a pre-conference and we had kind of a split. We had, did have some schools that were using Step Up already and wanted to get you know, six people trained all at once. And so that's a great opportunity 
If you're not familiar with Step Up at all, but you say we're really interested, you can certainly come as well. It will fit both of those sort of populations. So it will take place from 8.30 to 2 on Friday, again, just um, in the Charlottesville Apple. Obviously, we realize you will need to stay Thursday night. So it will cover um, a hotel room for Thursday night. You do need to register separately for this bystander intervention program. It is not required. You can come to Charlottesville and not go to Step Up, um, but Step Up is only available for schools that are registered for the Charlottesville uh, Apple. So the registration for that is November 15th. It's $100 per school, and you have to have at least two people from your Apple team attend the training. We don't want to have just one person who then is kind of the island. So just like we do for Apple, um, you have to have sort of a team. And you can bring up to six, you can bring up to your entire team. We really encourage you, if you've got a team of five or six and you want to come to Step Up, to bring your entire Apple team um, and bring them early so that you've got more people to help you be successful in implementing this. I will provide for uh, a breakfast and lunch that day, and then we will end in time for you to not miss any of the main uh, content of Apple and also get a little bit of a break for the day. So back into uh, the main conference, what will be happening. Friday, the registration is 1.30 to 4. Again, all team members must check in, not just one person picking up materials for everybody. Dinner is right at 5, as we mentioned, the face style. Let us know if something happens, even if that's last minute, uh, where a flight's delayed or whatever may happen. Please let us know so we can uh, help make sure that, um, if possible, we can um, save that spot for you for dinner. Uh, Friday night, we'll have Linda Hancock, um, who will be talking about alcohol issues in general. Joe and I will talk about alcohol and athletic performance, really kind of the foundations of the Apple model. Saturday morning, uh, we really focus on breaking those seven parts of the Apple model apart, having a lot of team meetings so you really see how does this apply to my campus. And then the afternoon focuses on the various breakout sessions. Again, we'll have another team meeting, some dinner and networking. Saturday is also our team photo day. So uh, we'll be doing that some on Friday, but also on Saturday. You can wear your campus attire, um, wear all your fun little good stuff. You will get that printed copy when you turn in your action plan on Sunday, and we'll also send you electronic versions. Sunday you'll have an opportunity to share your action plans. We'll have um, a great closing keynote. You'll be submitting everything online. Then again, that post tests that each individual complete and the online evaluations, which again, all um, participants are asked to complete the online evaluation. The next thing is after Apple, as we've said before, uh, this is uh, not just your come, sit, listen, leave. There are definitely things that happen after Apple and we're really excited to share that so you can be prepared. First, you're going to meet with your Apple team to implement that action plan you created at the Training Institute. Lots of schools will create a student athlete mentor program or they're going to revise their policies or here's some examples of Berry College's blackout shining lights on ATOD event that they held at their school twice this fall. And so you're going to really go back and implement and make a change and a difference. We, as we said, are, are definitely evaluation focused and so we're going to have two brief for team contacts only post Apple surveys in March and again in October and we're going to track your progress and what are your barriers and it's also a chance for us to check in with you and provide any help you may need, assistance on roadblocks and how to overcome them and tips and sharing best practices and resources. Uh, of course, please keep our staff informed if you are the team contact and you perhaps get a new job at a new institution and leave so that way we can make sure we're staying in contact with the right person from your school. We've got some advice we wanted to share from past team contacts that really just puts forth really what, how to prepare, we asked at one point, and it's really this idea of listening uh, to the student-athletes. We are 
the weekend will make up about 60% student athletes and we start Apple with an administrator set orientation and a student athlete orientation and at that time the student athletes really hear that, that this is about them and it's about them finding their voice and coming together to work as a team. And so as administrators, you know, it's important for us to, to stop and to listen and to figure out, you know, what our students are saying and we really try to empower these students to find their voice and to really be that catalyst of change. And so that idea of coming in that you're willing to make change and it's hard, especially those of us who have been working for a while at an institution that we know all the things that are not going to work, right? So it's a chance to, but still to kind of check, keep that in check and think about, you know what, we can make a difference and sometimes it's scaling back our students' dramatically fabulous dreams of changing the world and maybe let's figure out a bite at a time. But it's also coming in with an open mind and being willing to, to try some new things and make that difference. So it's again setting up for success. Even right before you come to Apple, it's scheduling a team meeting prior to Apple to review the expectations and format. We've had some people come and a reason we do this webinar is because especially for new schools, they're like, whoa, what's happening? We have to make an action plan, there's assessments. It's you will lose, you will lose momentum if you're not prepared. And so having that expectation, and it could be honestly if you have a 12 hour drive, feel free to meet then. Um, go over the expectations, your expectations as their team contact and also just the agenda. We'll send that out in December, the real detailed one to start to get an idea of the sessions we're offering, the times that you're going to need to be there. It is a long day, especially on Saturday. We really try to fit in as much as we can and take advantage of being there. So it's a chance to get everyone mentally prepared for what to do. We do have a little homework, if you will, for all attendees and it's, it's really just this idea of asking five people or having each person on your team ask five people what are some of the biggest issues surrounding alcohol and drugs in our athletics department because there's only going to be four to six of you sitting at this table and you're having really fantastic in-depth discussions and it's a chance for them to kind of take a survey, if you will, of what's going on, what are other students saying, what are the coaches saying, what are they seeing, and so that way that will really enhance you know, the discussions that you are having, having while you are at Apple. And again, just more voices from past team contacts that in how just stressing it is important to review the purpose and what to expect. Um, you know, a lot of our first time teams, like we said, are a little overwhelmed at the beginning and you just don't want that right out of the gate. So it's a chance to just kind of go in and say, hey, this is what we're doing. Uh, we just had our Division II Apple and I, I started out with the student athletes and said, how many of you were voluntold to be here and you have no idea why you're here and I would say a lot of them raised their hand. And um, well, there's some fun truth to that, I think. Um, sometimes it's a tough sell uh, that you're going to go talk about alcohol and drugs for a weekend, but it's a lot of fun and a lot of networking and um, a chance to really make a difference and that's the big thing you can really stress, especially to your student athletes. So we just have some final reminders again of our dates. We send a good amount of emails with reminders, but November 1st we really want um, those program proposals. If you've got a fantastic program that you've been implementing at your school, it's just a 30 minute session you would be presenting and we really want the student athletes to also be presenting. It's a great professional development opportunity for them and a chance to share those amazing and exciting ideas. And of course, November 15th is our magic date where all of the individual team regist member registrations in, our baseline assessment, and of course, if you want to come to the Step Up Bystander Intervention Training registration, we do then as well. So we try to lump it together, make it pretty simple and give you a break. Um, and then after that, you just kind of have to roll up back in January. So we're going to kick it over to you all for any questions you may have at this time. And let's see, okay, we have a question, is there any free time to explore the area? We'll be honest, there's, we, we keep it pretty jam-packed, there's very little breaks. So truly if your team wants to come in and really explore, we would suggest coming in a little earlier or perhaps staying a little bit later. If your team needs to stay an extra night, 
So come in on Thursday or stay through Sunday night. That will be an additional cost to you as the team, however. And that's just that um, our base rates that we have from the, ho the hotel. And you can certainly email us and we can set that up for you. Don't do the hotel registration through the hotel at all, even for those extra nights because that just throws things um, into a bit of a tizzy. So if you need extra nights, please let us know and we can work out the cost for you and you will pay us directly for that. Um, let's see, we have another question about step up. So um, do I have to bring my entire team? So you don't have to bring your entire team. We understand there, you may have uh, student athletes who can travel first thing Friday morning but wouldn't be able to come Thursday night. Um, so we do just require you have at least two members of your team um, and not someone who's not already planning on coming um, to Apple in general. But the more people you can bring, it just it makes it so much easier when you're back on your campus to have more people who've gone through um, the facilitator training. So what we'll do is you'll, you'll see the Step Up program itself. And then we will talk about sort of facilitation skills that are specific to step up. You will get copies of all the slides, all the materials. Um, you'll have hard copies um, in a nice little training binder. And then we'll also have time to look at what are other schools doing around step up. So if you are um, doing step up already on your campus, you'll have an opportunity to share what's going well um, or see this is an area that we're challenged. So we'll have some of that opportunity as well. So that's what we'll cover in that um, 8.30 to 2 time slot. Um, we see another question, can you pay for an extra person to attend Apple? Yes, you can. Um, sometimes we have teams who will bring seven or eight people. We do not recommend any more than eight uh, due to space. It is basically the actual cost of the person to attend. And so we can work with you to determine the exact cost. Basically, you would be paying for their meals, materials, and hotel room. And so we can certainly work with that for teams who want to bring seven or eight. Uh, another question we've sometimes been asked, can I, can I sign up my team again to take up another spot and then I'll bring 12? Uh, no. <laughs> so uh, only one school gets the slot and so uh, we handle it that way. So if you have any other additional questions, we are here for you. Um, and no question is a bad question. Really give us a call or shoot us an email at any time. Um, we're happy to understand that you would then be 